Sam Rayburn Reservoir and the $137,000 Texas Invitational. The competition is tough, as are the conditions, but regardless of how tough it is, one Bassmaster here today is going to be $32,000 richer. The angler who put together the perfect winning pattern under changing conditions. You'll also see a comfort behind last minute charge in 20 minutes that just about changes everything. It's a great tournament with some of the most classic seasonal pattern fishing. Stay tuned, I'm Ray Scott, the Bassmasters will be right back. Sam Rayburn Reservoir near Jasper, Texas, and the first day of the BASS Texas Invitational. For many of the 290 Bassmasters competing here, this is their favorite lake, and for a simple reason. The fishing is good, oftentimes great. And the bigger, heavier bass this lake is known for can quickly add the pounds and ounces to the angler's total weight of bass for the year. Weight that makes the difference in qualifying for the Bassmasters Classic, the World Championship of Professional Bass Angling. The time now is late March, and up until a day or so ago, the bass were in the shallows, many on the spawning beds. But a cold front has moved through, and the lake is being drawn down. Falling water and colder temperatures are a bad combination. The bass in extremely shallow water will back off with the colder receding water. The bass that stay become more cautious, more finicky in their feeding. As in most BASS tournament competitions, the anglers who can adapt to changing conditions are the ones who'll collect the biggest paychecks. The approach of many of the anglers fishing this tournament is different from previous years. The regulations now state the competitors can bring five 14-inch bass to the scales. Previously, they were allowed to weigh in seven 12-inch fish. The change means the competitors must fish for better quality bass and not rely on numbers of smaller fish as in other tournaments. This means different approaches, but regardless of angling techniques, someone always bags the bass. Ross Sheffield. Sheffield's from Arkansas with a bag full of bass. My friend, Ron, I just want to be able to have my picture taken with you. Lay him on the scale. We got a new leader, folks. I'm taking the bet, right? All right, now wait. 21 pounds wow. even. Boy, look at you. All right, by the way, pull it, reach it and pull out the largest bass and hold it up for these folks over here to see. Look here, folks. There is a Texas killer. Now, we're gonna, that's the biggest bass, and let's, let's lay, look at this fish and look at it beautifully. Folks, lay a fresh basket up here. This bass, would you say, how much do you think you weigh, Ron? I hope he weighs eight and a half. Somebody said they think he'll weigh 10. What's the largest you ever caught in your life? Well, I had big bass down here last year, Ray, with a 6'11", and I felt really fortunate to catch this fish. I've never caught a nine-pounder. If it weighs that, I want it. <laughs> I caught this fish on eight-pound test line. Woo, heart attack city. All right, lay her in there nice and easy. Nice and easy. Now watch the scale with me. Come on, get down close. Eight. Ten pounds, four ounces. Right. That's great. That's great. Now, I ain't never caught a fish that big in my life. Well, you know, you have the right. Uh, you have the right. This is a very old fish, and you have the right to have it mounted if you like. Well, I definitely would like to have it mounted, Ray. Uh, how about it, folks? <laughs> Can you tell us this is a once-in-a-lifetime deal? You know, you don't do this, but just, you know, very few people in the world, uh, when you pay your entry fee, you can vote. <laughs> Catch your release. This guy got his hands in his pocket. He's probably a banker, so he got all the money in the world. Probably financing these people. Listen, seriously, uh, this bass was caught. Can you, would you tell us what you don't make it? There's no secret. What were you doing? When, where were you doing it, and what happened? I was fishing a four-inch worm in about seven feet of water whenever the fish hit the lure. And uh, I was actually using eight pound test line. I was really lucky to get the fish. I had a great partner today, Mr. Hewlin Walker. You know, you don't have a net rule. And I asked Hewlin if he would mind lipping the fish. When she jumped, I think from the distance, I thought she was about a five pound fish. But when she got up close to the boat, he quickly got down and did one of the greatest jobs, just reached right down there and lipped her after she wore out. It took about five minutes to get her in the boat, you know, just kind of play her down. But uh, I, I feel great about this. I really do. That's all I can say. How about it, folks? Let's give a great hand. Oh, what a thrill.
And how does last year's Texas Invitational winner feel about what's happening? A lot of different things were happening today as far as the way the fish position compared to other years when we were down here. In past years, the fish would be just about in a designated place in the cover. You knew exactly where you'd have to cast in order to catch them. Now today, throughout the day, they'd continually move to different spots. They'd be on the outside of the cover. Then they'd get in tied to the cover. They'd be on the bottom. Then they'd be up right underneath the surface. So you had to continually adjust your cast and try to just more or less guess and just try to catch an isolated fish here and there. In fact, a couple of the fish I caught, I even saw hit the bait. So fishing's not real good, but if you go out there and work hard and just try to cover a lot of water, doing a lot of different things, I feel you can catch a lemon. Stay tuned as a different technique proves itself the second day. The Bassmasters will be right back. The conditions this second day are much the same, falling water. But one angler who established an earlier shallow water pattern is still fishing it with success. Missouri's Guido Hibden is called the master of the Gitsit, a small worm-like lure. He presents it sight fishing, casting to shallow, visible bass. A problem that Guido readily admits he faces with his small lure and light eight-pound test line is the probability of losing fish. There's just so much you can do with light line and big bass in the bushes. But one thing's for sure, you can't get them out of the cover unless first you get them on. And getting them on is a problem for the first day leader, Ron Shuffield. Not only is the high wind hampering his efforts with the small worm he's fishing in open water, but also the cloud cover is a problem. When the sun's up and sky's clear, bass will tend to stick tighter to the cover. With lower light conditions, the bass tend to roam away from the cover. But someone always brings bass to the scales. Guido Hibden, folks. Guido had 16 pounds and nine ounces yesterday. Today brings in a limit, another limit of bass. 10, five. 10 pounds, five ounces for Guido Hibden. Guido, now that's, that's, that's double duty. You and the boy, uh, your son, uh, Dion, were both in the top 20 yesterday, and this is going to... This is uh, your third place yesterday. This ought to hold you up there pretty close. I hope so. I, I didn't fish real good today. I don't know what happened. I broke off a couple of fish that there was no call to break off, and you don't, you don't win tournaments by losing them easy ones. Yeah, that, we got one more day, Guido. Thank you very much. And for some, the fishing's so tough, they can't even catch them in a barrel. Stay tuned. The barrel fish, the Bassmasters will be right back. <laughs> 